I have never been this excited for a phone. That is until the Xiaomi 14. Now the Xiaomi 14 is a major leap in terms of upgrade in specs compared to its predecessor, the Xiaomi 13. But this year, we've got the Xiaomi 14 na, guys. Oh my god. Processor pa lang, no? Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor, 34% more GPU power, which is exceptional kasi usually kasi mga 20% lang yung tinaas per iteration, but this one, 30 to 34%. And Xiaomi's boasting a much more powerful camera setup at the back, evolving their Leica camera from the Leica Summicron to the brand new Leica Summilux, which just means a much better low light camera, better HDR, a brand new sensor, ayun, brand new sensor. Sabi ni Xiaomi up to 80% better low light daw kasi ngayon kanyang aperture ay f1.6 na. Much faster than the F1.8 no Xiaomi 13. Siyempre, hindi siya magpapahuli sa kanyang RAM and ROM technology. UFS 4.0 for the ROM. LPDDR5X para sa kanyang RAM. And that brand new spanking display, 3,000 nits na po daw siya. Grabe naman, 3,000 nits. Nalala si Poco X6 Pro ay nasa 2,000 nits, mga ganun. Malapit na doon. Guys, si iPhone, 2,000 nits lang. This one is 3,000 nits. Baka mabulag na ako sa brightness nito. Malabo na nga yung mata ko. This better be good and safe. Kung merong retina display, ito may sore eyes display. Huh? Ito <laughs> 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 It's got 90 watts wired charging and 50 watts wireless charging. That and so much more. Tinan natin kung okay ba talaga siya. Xiaomi 14. Kapit sabihin sa inyo watching Unbox Series. Woohoo! Okay, so Xiaomi is back with the Leica branding, co-engineered. Very basic lang yung box, very minimalistic. Here's the box, Xiaomi, designed by Xiaomi. My SIM ejector pin. Oh, by the way, naka-hyper OS na daw po siya. Safety information guide and the quick start guide is right here with the warranty card. Ito, ito dapat yung sinasama sa box. Ganitong klaseng casing. Ang ganda, ang pogi. Very similar to the Poco X6 Pro or X Series. At ito na yung phone. Ay, ito yung in love sa flagship ni Xiaomi. The size. The size is 6. Ang liit lang. Very com this, it's a compact phone. Very rare for a phone in the Philippines to have this kind of size. Ito yung tura niya. Mamaya na yan. Underneath, we're getting, yes, a 90 watt fast charger. And it doesn't look like meron siyang power delivery. So baka hindi siya perfect for charging your laptop. Meron po siyang USB Type-C cable. And that is pretty much it. So right now, wala pong pro version ang binibenta. 13 Pro, wala po sa Philippines yun. Ibang bansa lang po. And yung Ultra, parang hindi siya nilabas talaga sa ating bansa. So meaning, ito na talaga yung magiging flagship ni Xiaomi. Ito at yung magiging T-Series nila later this year. Pero balita ko lalabas na si Ultra. Ha? Huh? Sana, sana lang. Oh! Okay, wait. Before I start, tinan ko yung display. Oh! Oh! God, I'm right! Oh! Ha! They joke lang, oh ay lako, effects lang po yun guys. So it, ito yung pinaka max niyang brightness right here. And no, this will not replace your flashlight. So this is the phone. And look at the design. It looks like the Xiaomi 13. There is a minor difference in the overall look, pero kasi feeling ko marami na in love dun sa Xiaomi 13 design and that's why they didn't want to totally change or revamp the look of the successor ng phone. It still got that simple, luxurious, minimalistic back, square camera module right here at the top. It is a pure color, pure white po to. No gradient, uh, it's glossy, may counting reflections. This is Corning Gorilla Glass Victus, by the way. Ooh, at sa harap. Beans, uh, may problema ka ba sa utak? Pat mo ginagawa yun? Well, it's part of the review. Sabi Corning Gorilla Glass Victus eh. Tapos mo basag lang on the spot. The unbiased drop test. Nakabahan na lahat talaga sa akin. Unhinged diaries. Yung bag guys, unhinged diaries. Okay. But wait, when I look at the front, may kamukha po siyang other flagship device na <laughs> that is very reminiscent of the number one flagship sa Philippines. Bawal ko sabihin yun dito. But yes, the, the shape, the bezels, it really resembles that phone. Kaya lang ba't malaki yung punch hole? Ah, kaya siguro siya malaki kasi nga maliit yung body. Nasa perception lang pala yun ng tao. But yes, this phone is 6.36 inches, 6.3 inches. You know what else is sized like this? It is the iPhone 15 Pro. Huh? Ay, nasabi ko! Uh, yung size! Grabe ko ito! <laughs> Pero wala naman sinabi si iPhone sa display nito. Malayo. Pero you know, yung kanyang size ay very rare for a phone in the Philippines. Mad madalas kasi mga tao, bumibili talaga naman ng laking phone. The average size of a phone is 6.7 inches. Ayun. Mahilig sa ducks ang mga Pilipino. So nung nahawakan ko siya, parang nakakapanibago. And at the same time, kind of looks very useful to have this kind of size. Parang mas compact siya sa pockets mo. In comparison, ito po si 15 Pro Max and this is the Xiaomi 14. And as you can see, 
nakakapanibago. I also noticed na parang mas madali mag one-handed typing on this phone. But still, it's purely subjective kung uh, ayon yung gitong size, then go for a much bigger phone. No problem naman dun. Now, both the back and front is Corning Gorilla Glass Victus. The sides are aluminum, metallic finish, chrome, actually, yung kanya kang sides. May antenna bands pa. Very solid yung feel, and there, there's a little bit of heft right there. Sobrang solid na kanya feels, talagang pang flagship yung datingan. Now, moving on to the sides. Power button, volume rocker sa taas niya. Sa taas naman wala. Uy, walang IR blaster. Pang mid-range daw kasi yun. Sa left side wala. Uy, very minimalistic talaga siya. And it looks like meron siyang dalawang speakers. No? Isa sa earpiece at isa naman sa ilalim ng phone. You got here the USB Type-C port, microphone, and the SIM tray. Na dual nano SIM card slot lang. So if I were you, I would get the 512GB version. And by the way, UFS 4.0 na po yan. So definitely much faster read and write speeds. And now for the display. The display on this phone is much more improved now. It's a 1.5K crystal rest display. 120Hz refresh rate. It is a custom C8 AMOLED display developed specifically by Xiaomi for this phone. It is much brighter. 3,000 nits of brightness. Peak brightness po yan, no? Typical po is 1,000 nits lang po. Ang sabi na Xiaomi, mas color accurate daw yung display. Mas high res, mas clear yung image quality. And look at this YouTube video. 4K, 60 frames per second, HDR. Guys, meron pa siyang HDR 10, 10 plus, Dolby Vision. Kompleto po. Xiaomi has one of the best display technologies on planet Earth. Kahit saan po yan. Mapa entry level, mid-range, flagship. They simply have the best displays among all price ranges, promise. And it's not even close. Pero ito ah, hindi po ito available sa mga ibang versions or price ranges ng mga Xiaomi products. Nire-reserve madalas ni Xiaomi yung kanyang best Hyper OS or MIUI version sa kanyang flagship. Ibig sabihin, may mga features na available lang po sa kanya. And it doesn't have a lot of bloatware. Sucks lang, konti lang. Hindi po siya stock Android. Pero, the Hyper OS system is here. If you've been waiting for the Hyper OS, oh, by the way, the Xiaomi 13 will also get the Hyper OS update. Kaya, kung na Xiaomi 13 ka at uh, di mo pa nakita ito as an upgrade yet, don't worry, magkakaroon ka po. Sabi na Xiaomi, si Hyper OS daw is a human-centric operating system designed for the human, car, home, smart ecosystem. It features efficient hardware resource scheduling, supports distributed computing, offers an extremely lightweight file system for consistent performance, and has superior heterogeneous compatibility. But from my eyes, it kind of looks like a reskinned MIUI. That is sarapan lang po yun. And I think ginawa nila ito para maging familiar pa rin yung mga long-time fans ng Xiaomi. Pero yun, sinabi ni Xiaomi na totally recoded na po yung kanyang back-end. The coding here is much different now. So, ibig sabihin, much more reliable, much faster, much more efficient, better battery life. Yung back-end, yun dapat yung pagtunan ng pansin dito. Not yung kanyang UI. Pero, Bins, kamusta naman yung kanyang performance? So, how is the performance on this thing? Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, ito na po. Together with that, LPDDR5 RAM and the UFS 4.0 ROM, ito na po. Now, yung iba kasi mga Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, meron silang parang boosting, gaming something that that makes the Antutu benchmark score go to almost 2 million. Ito po ay 1.9, almost 2 million points sa Antutu benchmark. Pero don't worry guys, pares po sila ng Antutu benchmark ni S24 Ultra ni Samsung. Now with this kind of performance, grabe, sobrang responsive po lahat ng opening of apps. Switching of apps is also really smooth yung animation. Pero hindi mo makita dito yung major difference talaga from the Xiaomi 13. You'll only see that sa mga games. Like for example, sa Genshin Impact, 60 frames per second po siya lagi at the highest settings. And this is how it looks like, no? With the game turbo turned on. Grabe, uh, this is the peak. This is peak gaming na po. For most people, this is gonna be overkill na. And I'm also glad na si Xiaomi ay also in friends with the developers of Genshin Impact, Call of Duty, and Mobile Legends. Kaya nakita mo dito guys, halos lahat po ng games na sa Play Store ay optimized for this game. Well, at least for the popular ones. Well, except for Mobile Legends. For now, ito lang po yung kanyang settings right here. And feeling namin, kayang-kaya niya yung ultra refresh rate. Ultra-ultra po. Dapat to. Ang ibig sabihin lang naman yan, di pa nagbabayad ng Moonton Taxi, Xiaomi. Ayun, may tax po siya yan guys. Bayad mo na bago ultra. Pero nagbayad na si Xiaomi kay Call of Duty kasi nga ito po, naka-ultra. Frame rates na po siya and up to max graphics. And this is something that you will never get on a mid-range phone. This kind of optimization is only available sa mga flagship phones, na especially sa mga Snapdragon 8 Gen series. Parang hindi yata to available sa mga Dimensity ni MediaTek. So, sabihin, kapag naka-Snapdragon ka, lamang ka talaga sa Call of Duty. Could be. But yes, the performance on Call of Duty talaga is sobrang smooth. Maganda ang gyroscope. It's a good gaming phone. It's good in a sense na it's fast enough, comfortable enough, pero 
you might actually need more screen real estate kapag ka five fingers ang gamit sa Call of Duty kasi nga medyo maliit yung kanyang display for that kind of usage. Ah, siguro kaya dahil yung iba, malaki talaga yung display to accommodate those kind of settings. Pero kung malit naman yung mga kamay mo, maybe it's totally okay. Ayan, sila pa siya namin na, ah, pwede naman pala. Kaya lang guys, since malit yung display, parang matatakpan nung ibang fingers mo yung nangyayari sa screen. Yes, definitely kapag mas malaki yung inyong display, mas marami yung pwede makita sa inyong screen. Ito naman si Jack. Okay, so hindi siya marunong five fingers. <laughs> Traditional gaming pala si Ana, si Jack. Ah, so ganda ko nun pala maglaro. Okay lang, kitang kita naman yung display. Ayan, it's, it's fine. Pero sakto sa kami ni Jack eh. Max, galing ni Jack. Hi, say hi. Hi. Okay. boy. <laughs> But overall, the performance is very, very good. Sobrang smooth po niya sa Call of Duty. Definitely 120 FPS na nakita namin dito. Very smooth po yung natingan niya. Yun nga lang, hindi ko pa masyadong madyan si Mobile Legends dito kasi hindi siya super optimized yet. Sana i-contact nyo na si Munton dito para mas lalo pa siya ma-optimized dito. Okay? Okay. Pero syempre naman, ba't ka naman bibili ng flagship para sa Mobile Legends? This is the main reason why you're gonna buy this phone, the camera. And it looks like talaga major improvement yung kanyang camera compared to the Xiaomi 13 last year. The Xiaomi 14 has a brand new Light Fusion 900 sensor, better aperture, 80% better low light performance. The main sensor is a 50 megapixel Leica sensor. Ito po yung f1.6. It has a floating telephoto camera now, focal length of 75mm f2.0, pero hindi sinabi yung megapixel. And finally, it has a 50 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, and yung focal length naman nito is 14mm f2.2. Tapos yung selfie camera is 32 megapixels. Wait lang, bago tayo mag-start sa kanyang camera photos, ito na ba yung video niya? Bakit nyo na yung video? Kasi nga meron siyang 4K 60 frames per second finally. Kasi last year guys, 1080p lang. Yan, yun tapat. Pero ito na yung mga photos. Yung mga photos, ay grabe. No. The first thing I noticed sa kanyang main camera is that DSLR-like camera quality. Kasi guys, madalas sa mga smartphone, they look like a smartphone camera. Overprocessed, weird colors, but this one is close to real life accuracy. Ganito pa yung tunay na color sa totoong buhay. At yung skin tone, sobrang natural po. The hair, the skin, yung damit ni Jack, ayan po. Yan po yung tunay na kulay niya sa totoong buhay. And that background blur, ang ganda. Sobrang na-impress ako kay Xiaomi ngayon ha. Ibang, ibang klase na tong camera sensor na to. Looks like they have been listening to all your feedback. Kasi nga for the very longest time, si Xiaomi po ay hindi po leading camera smartphone brand. Looks like this is gonna be up there together with the other brands, uh, DxO Mark. Parang feeling ko, this year na yun, ha? Tingnan mo naman yan, yung mga portrait shots, mga close-up, yung mga macro. Top of the line image quality. The only thing na hindi top of the line dito is yung kanyang highlights, no? Medyo sabog po yung highlights pa rin. Yung something na pwedeng naman ma-fix siguro sa software processing. Kaya lang siguro baka pag sinobra naman nila sa dynamic range, baka hindi na siya magmukhang natural. Which is yung sakit ng mga most mid-range phones. Pero kasi nagagawa ni Apple. And kaya lang si Apple ay sobrang blue naman sa kapag disguise. I did don't want to sacrifice that color accuracy here. Which is, totoo naman, no? Yung mga tunay talaga na DSLR cameras ay sabog talaga sa labas. Totoo yan. <laughs> pag nagpicture kayo sa isang Sony camera or Canon camera, sabog po yung highlights nung skies. Not unless, naka-raw file ka at i-edit mo na siya sa post-production. That I feel na limitation talaga nung isang camera na kapag hinaluan mo ng post-processing could actually hurt the image more than actually helping it out. But then I, I really do see there's a consistency in the highlight part. Kapag ka merong sobrang liwanag na part, medyo kumakalat yung light everywhere dun sa image. Oh, parang may meron glow. Which means mag-iingat ka na lang siguro kapag nasa labas ka sa outdoor, kapag ka sobrang lakas ng sinag ng araw. But where this phone really truly shines, yung kanya main camera is yung sa low light. At ito po yung mga images na nakuha ko sa low light. Grabe guys, no? matindi talaga yung jump niya from the Xiaomi 13 to the 14. Look at the pictures I got here. Especially sa background blur. no? Usually kapag uh, sa low light, medyo konti lang yung details na nakuha before. But now, my gosh, grabe na. Christmas light right here. no? Grabe yung bokeh. The effect is just so beautiful. Ayan, so perfect nito for travel if you're traveling to different countries. May mga cityscape kayo na gustong picturan. Ganito po yung itsura niya. The, the buildings, the lights, the sceneries, sa, sa, sa street talagang. That is where its strengths truly lie. Isa pang strength niya is that floating telephoto camera. Bad floating. Well, based dito sa kanyang design, nagpa-float daw yung kanyang structure. But all you need to know about this camera is that it has a much better minimum focusing distance. Kasi nga, most telephoto lens ay hanggang 45 centimeters lang po yung minimum focusing distancing nila. But this one, kaya doon niya up to 10 centimeters. 
Wow, sobrang close na nun. Problema naman of most flagships, hindi mo pwedeng i-close ng sobra yung telephoto, kundi magbablur siya. Kaya ang ginagawa na iba, i-close pa ng todo, tapos gagawing ultra-wide angle na. Ang problema naman doon guys is, sa sobrang close mo, you're now blocking out the light. Which is pangit. Kailangan na light, di ba? Para mas maganda yung image. At saka hindi kasing ganda ng image quality ng telephoto yung ultra-wide. Kasi si ultra-wide guys, mas maganda yung boka. Sa ultra-wide naman, talagang parang F11 yung dating. No? Parang in-focus lahat, walang blurred. Oh, sharp siya overall. So, it depends na lang siguro sa inyong gustong art style. But yes, the telephoto can go up to 3.2 optical zoom and up to 60 times digital zoom. Pinaka-stable yung 3.2 guys. So, kung kasi inyo, wag na kayo mag-60. <laughs> Grabe yung, ah, hanggang 6 times Digital video lang po. <laughs> Pero guys, selfies, wala akong masabi. This is the best selfie camera from Xiaomi yet. It's got all the necessary selfie features na kailangan mo sa isang selfie camera. No, beautification. Oh, beautification naman is hindi OA. Fresh ka lang tingnan. Wala siyang OA na makeup, lipstick. It doesn't distort your face. Also guys, it has this neat features for your selfie camera kapag ka ikaw lang 1x. Pero kapag may kasama ka na sa picture, bigla siya magpa 0.8x just like that. Wow! Pero pag uh, ako lang ulit, oh, 1x siya oh! Hindi ko pinindot! Wow! Ulit tayo sa pataba! Okay, so kasama na si MJ, 1 to 3. Oh! Diba? Ako lang. Oh! 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 oh. Beans, nakalimutong sabihin nyo yung like a authentic, like a vibrant. May pinakaiba na ba siya ngayon? Your question is legit. Kasi nga, before, last year, halos walang pinakaiba. Ito na po. So, ito yung like authentic. Ito naman yung like a vibrant. The main difference is, like authentic yung pinaka realistic, more accurate. Like a vibrant naman is kung gusto mo talaga enhance na agad yung kulay, more contrast, may content beautification. That is the like a vibrant. And yes, this was consistent all throughout the other pictures. So, so yun, they actually made it look much more different now compared last year. And of course, meron din po yan sa Pro Mode. Ay, grabe yung Pro Mode talaga. Pagka nakita mo yung Pro Mode, ang daming settings dito. Look at that. It's a full stack Pro Mode. It's even got raw, ultra raw. Meron din po siyang ganun. Histogram, focus peaking, exposure verification. Grabe naman to. Ay, nakalimut ako yung video. Grabe may features na camera. The video can shoot up to 8K 24 frames per second. Pero yun, kung gusto mo ng HDR sa video, meron siyang up to 4K, 30 frames per second lamang. Actually, walang 60 frames per second HDR video recording. Even at 1080p, wala po siyang 60 FPS HDR. But yes, I love taking videos on this smartphone. Very cinematic, very stable yung video. The only grip na lang talaga is yung kanyang handling of the highlights. Uh, like say, for example, ito, medyo sabog pa rin yung aking background. Pero yun, uh, if hindi ka naman ganun ka-arte talaga for the highlights, then definitely go for it. What you're seeing sa kanyang image quality, then go for it na. So parang feeling ko lang, you're just lacking that extra push. But if the highlights are bothering you, then yeah, there are other flagship phones that could handle better highlights, better in video. Oh, by the way, the video can also handle up to 3.2x zoom, which is nice. May 0.6x then. And sa video, pwede ka mag-change from 0.6x to 15x digital zoom while recording as well. So, ayun lang muna, guys. Bukos ng boss ko. Heto na po yung price ng Xiaomi 4K. 12 to 5, 6. 45,999 pesos lang. At yung 12, 5, 12 naman ay 47,999. Now, if you have been waiting to upgrade that Xiaomi 12, Xiaomi 11, or galing kasi ibang brand, this is the best time to jump into the Xiaomi flagship. Kasi nga, hindi lang po yung kanyang camera yung major jump, but also yung OS. Finally, Hyper OS right here. A much better display. Design-wise, perfect na daw siya, sabi ni Xiaomi, kaya stay pa rin siya ganyan. It's not perfect. The camera is not perfect. The performance could use much more optimization, but yeah, magbabayad na naman kay Munton and you're good to go. But will this come up in our next Ikok Live with better discount? Ko alam, ha? baka. So follow na lang. <laughs> and uh, follow for more videos just like this one. Subscribe, hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any of my great condolence events. And you're watching Unbox Diaries. Woohoo!